In this one I'll be recreating the effect we see in the outer shell of this ball. It's basically each face being scaled down based on a noise texture. I'll be using the 3.1 alpha for this one, but it works in 3.0 also. Check my Patreon for all the project files from my videos, coupon codes for free Gumroad products, and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Link is in the description. Here's a summary of what we'll cover. We'll hop into geometry nodes and talk about how to get each face to scale down. Then we'll go over animating it with a noise texture, including how to get it to loop properly. And last, I'll show a different way of achieving this effect using modifiers instead of geometry nodes. All right, let's get started. So here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.1 alpha for this one. You can use 3.0 if you want uh, and follow along just fine. I'll let you know what the differences are when, you, when we actually come to them. And one other thing is that screencast keys isn't working, so you won't be able to see what keys I'm pressing over here, but I'll just try to let you know what I'm actually pressing. So first of all, we can start off with just an empty scene and I'll add in a plane. This is where we're going to put our geometry nodes modifier onto. So I'll go up over here, open a geometry nodes window like that, and we can just click new right here to add a geometry nodes modifier. So we're not going to need this group input, so I'll delete that with X and shift A and then S to search. And I'm going to add in an icosphere. This is what we're going to start with. So we can just plug that in right there. And I'll add a few subdivisions, maybe like I'll add four for right now. And I'll just turn, I'll turn cavity on just so we can see that. A little better you can actually see it's made out of a bunch of triangles and I like using a matte cap too so I'll turn that on. Alright so if you're using version 3.1 at the time of recording you can add in a dual mesh node right here. You can see when I do that it's turning everything into uh, hexagons and pentagons right there. Don't worry if you're using 3.1 this will still work without this you know you'll just be working with triangles instead so I'll leave this on here Next, what we have to do is we have to split all of the edges because basically what we're going to do is make it so that each face is scaling down. But if they're all connected, then they won't, you know, they'll be connected so they can't separate from each other. So we need to split the edges. So uh, shift A then S and I'll search for split edges like that. So when we put this on, it'll visually look the same. But what's actually happening is each of these faces is, uh, you know, not connected to each other right now. So next, what we need to do is find the position of each face. So this is actually not too hard. We can just uh, use a capture attribute right here. And we want to change this from point to face because we're looking for, you know, the face data. And float, we need to change this to vector because float is just one value. In vector, we're going to need, you know, the, the position of each face. So the X, Y, and Z position. And the value that we want, the attribute we want is the position. So you can search for position and just plug that in right there. So now this attribute right here is going to show us, it's going to give us the position of each face. Um, you can kind of imagine that as like a single point in between every face and it's giving us the location of each of those points. So now we need a set position. You can plug that in here. You just want to run the geometry through like that. And so now if we use this attribute and plug that directly into position, um, it looks like it disappears, but what's really happening is it's scaling all of the faces down to a single point, and we can't see the points. So what we need to do is blend between the regular position and this attribute right here. So we can do that with a mix RGB. We can just plug, I'll plug the attribute into the second color slot and the position into the first. And now when we plug the color, into the position right here, you can see what's actually going on. We can control the face size with this factor slider right here. So if we set it all the way down, it'll look normal. And if we put this all the way to one, it'll scale each face down to like a single point like that. What's cool about this is we can plug textures into the factor right here. Um, also, if you want to be able to see this a little better, I like to add a solidify afterward like that. So they won't be flat faces. You can, um, you know, give them some thickness if you want. You just have to click back on the geometry nodes modifier right here to get these, uh, you know, the nodes back. So what we're going to do now is bring in a noise texture with shift A, S to search, and I'll look for noise. And we can plug the factor of the noise into this factor right here. 
It's a little hard to see what's going on, so you can control this a few different ways. Usually what I use is a map range. You could also use a color ramp if you want. And now I'll just put these two values closer together, so I'll do 0.4 for the minimum and 0.6 for the maximum like that. Um, this is going to be a little hard to see until you add more faces, so we can go back to the subdivisions and just turn this up a little bit. 5 should be good. And I'll turn the detail all the way down so we have a smoother texture, and I'll turn this down to 2. And now you can actually see what shapes we have going on, these like big uh, open blobs like that. So you might get some weird things going on. You can see like this face right here is kind of messed up, and that's because these are scaling down. It's like kind of taking a bunch of points and cramming them together, and when they get really close, I think the solidify is what makes it kind of glitch out. Instead of these scaling all the way down, um, we can set it so... I think what we have to change is the two max. If we change this as like 0.9 or something like that, you can see instead of scaling all the way down to a singular point, they just scale down to this like, it's kind of small, but it's not zero. And that will prevent any of those glitches. And I think it just, it looks cool too. You could also do that with the two minimum so that um, if you want, you could make it so that these don't actually touch when they get to their maximum value like that. Um, I like to leave it at zero, just all the way up. Now, if we set this to 4D, we can change this W value to get some motion. Uh, one other thing that you can do in 3.1, um, there's this node called scene time, like that. Um, and this will make it so when you, you know, you can get the seconds and the frame that you're on. So if we plug the seconds into the W and hit the spacebar to play, you can see it just it starts moving. Um, if you're using 3.0 and you want to do the same thing, basically what you have to do is uh, use a driver. So I, I usually use a value for this. If you want, you can actually type this directly into W, but this is the way I like to do it. So in here, I'll just type uh, hash frame like that. And this will just return the frame that we're on. When we hit play, you can see this goes up. So we can plug the value into the W. This will go way too fast. So if you want, you could do division in here, like divided by 60, like that. I like to just use a math node and divide it like this. And I'll change this to 60, something like that. And you can change this value on the fly to whatever you want instead of typing it in. So that's why I like to do it. Yeah, also keep in mind that we are set to uh, 24 frames per second. Changing this will kind of change how fast things are moving uh, on your screen. You might have to affect this value if you change that one. I'll just get rid of these. If you want this to loop the way that I did it, is I used two different noise textures, like this. And I used a mix RGB to mix them together. So I'll just plug the factor into the first color and the second factor into the second color. Now we can blend between these two noise textures uh, with the factor right here, and they're both set to the same. They both have all the same values, so this isn't gonna look any different. We need a timeline, or uh, I'll use a dope sheet. Bring that up here. I wanna go to frame zero, like that, and I'm going to set this to zero. So basically, when it first starts, it's going to use this one, and at the very end, it's going to use this noise texture right here. So I want to blend between them. I'll have this set to zero at frame zero, then we go to the very end, the last frame, which uh, in this case is 250. I'll change this to one and hit I, hover over it, hit I to insert a keyframe there. I'll have this one, this top one on frame zero, be set to zero, like that. And at the very end, we'll have it set to one, and for this to loop properly, basically I want this one to end where this one begins. So you can see this starts at zero, so we want this one to end at zero. Go to last frame, insert a keyframe with I, and I'll go back to zero now. And if we want this to move the same speed, we just have to turn this one to be negative one on frame zero, and I'll insert a keyframe there. So if you can't see any of these keyframes, try pressing this button right here. Once again, I'm using the dope sheet. Um, it'll make it so that it'll show all of the keyframes, whether you have them selected or not. So I'm going to hit A to select everything, T, and change the interpolation to linear. So now these will all move at a constant rate. When we hit play and it goes uh, from the end to the beginning, you shouldn't see any stuttering. And it just keeps going like that. 
So the speed you make this is really going to depend on the scale and stuff like that. Um, you want to make sure that both of these noise textures have the same uh, values in there, except for the W. So if you change the scale of one, you should change the scale of the other, or else it won't loop right. So an easy way to change the speed of this is going to the graph editor. So I'll hit control tab. That's the shortcut to get into the graph editor. Once again, I'll hit this, and then we'll be able to see all of our keyframes. Select everything with A, hit period on the numpad to zoom in. And now we can see our values. This is where the first one starts. This is where the second noise texture ends. Um, what we want to do is just select this, uh, the lowest point and the highest point right there. Hit period to make sure that you're using the bounding box center as the pivot point. And if you scale these apart, um, you want to make sure you hit S and then Y to constrain it to the Y axis. This is an easy way to make your animation uh, faster or slower. And you know it'll still loop properly because they both start and end at the same point right there. So if this is moving too slow for you, you just want to scale it up on the Y axis like that. And it will go faster, but it'll still loop properly. So you can get a similar result without geometry nodes um, by just using a bunch of modifiers. So I'll just do that really quick. Um, I'll use a plane as an example, tab into edit mode and subdivide this a few times like that. Basically what we would need to do is add a um, edge split like that. I'll turn this down to zero and then a smooth like that. This is doing a very similar thing where you're splitting all of the edges so they're separated and then you're using the smoothing to scale each face down. You can use a vertex group if you want to use like a texture to control this. That's a little more complicated. I'll let it solidify. Basically what you'd have to do is use a um, vertex weight edit. I'll put this at the very beginning and we need a vertex group. So you can go over here to object data properties at a vertex group like that. We'll go up here, make sure that group is selected and the group should be selected for your smooth modifier too. And then we'll use group add right here. So it's adding things to the group. For the fall off, we just want to invert this right there. So it's using the same uh, fall off type, but we're inverting it. And for the influence, we can add a texture right here. So I'll just add a texture, go over here to the texture so we can actually see it and I'll change this to clouds. So one downside of doing it this way is you have to use the textures over here instead of using them um, in the node editor. So you do have a lot more options when you're using the node editor, pretty much all of the same options you would have with shaders. So if you want, you can mix textures, you could use images, you could use images over here, but you can mix um, procedural textures and things like that quite a bit easier with more control, things like that. And this is tied to your uh, topology, your like mesh resolution. So you have to like add more geometry for this to work correctly. You could probably use a subdivision surface for this also, but this is like a different way of going about it. It's very similar to the geometry nodes method. You just have fewer options basically. All right, that's it for this one. Let me know what else you'd like to learn about geometry nodes. Once again, you can find this project file on my Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.